Episode 1 of Avatar, The Last Airbender Season 1 begins with a chase scene through the Fire Nation's capital city. Firebending soldiers chase an earthbending man through the streets. He's captured and taken to Fire Lord Sozin. The Fire Lord reveals a plan to wage war with the world, find the undiscovered airbending avatar, and kill him. He burns the earthbender alive. The opening credits explain the cycle of the Avatar and that a young airbender named Aang may not be ready for the responsibility to control all four elements and keep the world at peace. At the Southern Air Temple, Aang's mentor, Gyatso, speaks with the airbending council. He doesn't think Aang is ready for the responsibility of being the Avatar, but they may not be able to wait to start his training. Monk Gyatso breaks the news to Aang. Rattled by the news and afraid of the responsibility, Aang takes a ride with his air bison pal, Appa. Just moments later, the Fire Nation launches a surprise attack on the Southern Air Temple. Because of the power of Sozin's comet in the sky, the firebenders have extra strength. They are able to conquer the entire temple, and Monk Gyatso gives his life defending a group of children. Aang and Appa get caught in a storm and are overtaken by a giant wave. Just before drowning, Aang suddenly glows blue and encases himself in an ice ball. The boy in the iceberg. At Wolf Cove in the Southern Water Tribe, we meet Katara and her brother, Sokka. They go fishing, and Sokka tells her to keep her ability to waterbend a secret. An iceberg explodes, sending a blue beam of light into the sky. A young Fire Nation boy with a scar on his face seems happy to see this. Aang emerges from the broken iceberg, unconscious. Katara demands they return him to the village despite Sokka's protests. The young, scarred boy is Prince Zuko, banished from the Fire Nation until he can find the Avatar. His uncle, Iroh, looks after him. Aang wakes up as if from a nightmare, confused at his new surroundings. Katara's grandma explains to Aang that he's been frozen for 100 years and is the very last of the airbenders. Zuko's ship approaches Wolf Cove. Sokka reluctantly hides Aang but loses in a fight to Zuko. Aang comes forward and offers himself up to spare the water tribe. Iroh speaks briefly with Aang on Zuko's ship and then Aang escapes with the help of Appa, Sokka, and Katara. Unable to return home, Katara and Sokka go with Aang to the Southern Air Temple. Upon discovering Gyatso's bones, Aang is overcome with grief and glows blue again, summoning immense power. The memory of his bond with Gyatso calms him down. Aang vows to learn the ways of the Avatar and bring balance to the world. The Episode Review It's finally here. Netflix has taken a stab at Avatar, The Last Airbender, one of the most beloved children's cartoons of all time. With so much hype and anticipation, some of the reservations from fans turn out to carry weight. Despite a few shortfalls, this show is, at the very least, a step up from the live-action film adaptation that everyone would rather forget. From the opening sequence, it's clear that this show is aimed at a slightly older audience. The bending is extreme, great-looking, and fairly violent. The CGI and martial arts elements are gorgeous, and the firebending is absolutely brutal to witness. Watching the Fire Lord burn a man alive by grabbing his wrist sets a serious tone immediately. Unfortunately, this tone forces the writing to sacrifice elements that made the original so great. Rather than actually witnessing Aang be a carefree child, we have to settle for him explaining as much to Appa. That's a classic show, don't tell mistake. It's a consequence of the breakneck pace, as the show will attempt to deliver in 8 episodes what the original did in 20. Something done well in such a short time was displaying the bond between Aang and Gyatso. Even though we don't see them do anything together, like throw pies, the acting of both characters makes their relationship feel grounded. Simply put, the acting and action excel, but this adaptation hasn't proven that it understands what makes The Last Airbender so great. A massive task ahead. It is, at times, hard to tell if this show is trying to entice new audiences or simply trying to appeal to longtime fans of the original show. 
It's not the action sequences or even the lore. It's the impeccable, character-centered storytelling that immortalized the animated series. Aang actively runs away from the temple in the original. Here, he simply goes for a fly to clear his mind. Small choices like that make a big difference in depth and capacity for growth. In the original, Katara's anger towards her brother improves her bending, and that's what sets Aang free. Here, it's more of a coincidence. There are small things that are glazed over which carry far more weight in the animated series. For newcomers, you are likely to feel enticed by a magical new world and likely connect to these characters. For old fans, it's becoming ever clearer that nothing may ever live up to the pure excellence of the original.